Mexican history is flooded with hundreds of stories of drugs, but only a few of them, including Pablo Escobar, El Chapo, and Ismael Zambada, aka El Mayo, have earned the badge of the biggest drug leaders. These cartel leaders literally control the drug industry of Mexico with their smuggling businesses all over the world. Join us today as we dive into the depths and have a look at the savage lifestyle of El Mayo. A Powerful Leader Ismael Zambada leads one of the world's most powerful drug trafficking empires with a multi-billion pound fortune and isn't fearful to protect it at all costs. As a result, throughout the pages of history, he has become one of the most wanted criminals in the world. He is one of the most notorious criminals on the planet and is featured in Netflix's series Narcos, a variety of weird modes of transportation, including aircraft, trains, boats, and even narco submarines, are used by his nefarious empire to carry massive amounts of heroin and cocaine across Colombia, Mexico, and the United States. El Mayo has always avoided detection despite his extensive criminal career, even while his co-boss, Joaquin Guzman, better known as El Chapo, has been apprehended. El Chapo, the infamous drug kingpin, is currently serving a life term in a high-security prison after successfully escaping from prison twice. While hundreds of thousands of pages of evidence prove that Guzman was in fact the leader of the cartel, still very little is known about the murky activities of Zambada. What is certain is that El Mayo assumed command of the Sinaloa cartel after El Chapo's imprisonment, and that he has remained at large ever since. Who is Ismael Zambada Garcia? Ismael Zambada Garcia was born in 1948 in a village named El Alamo in the Sinaloa state capital of Culiacán, Mexico. He grew up to be an ambitious criminal from the beginning of his life. When he was just 16 years old, the illiterate farmer started trafficking illegal substances. While he began with a small budget, he gradually increased his income. Soon after, he was associated with the Guadalajara Cartel, a large drug trafficking group that dominated the drug trade throughout the late 1980s and early 1990s. Once upon a time, the cartel had complete control of the drug trafficking between Mexico and the United States of America. Everything changed with the apprehension of the organization's founder, Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, sometimes known as El Padrino or the Godfather. When Gallardo was apprehended by American authorities in 1989, he was sentenced to 40 years in jail. But the murder of a DEA agent resulted in him being sentenced to a further 37 years in prison in 2017. Although Gallardo's downfall was unquestionably a win for law enforcement, it also triggered bloodshed among many drug lords who were left without one of their most influential leaders. This action also resulted in dividing the once dominant organization into many factions, the most notorious of which was the Sinaloa Cartel. El Chapo and El Mayo are credited with establishing the Sinaloa Cartel from the ruins of the Guadalajara Cartel in the early 1990s. After decades of horrible murder, intimidation, and illicit drug trafficking throughout the globe, they have established the Sinaloa Cartel into a multi-billion dollar business. And even after El Chapo's arrest, it's apparent that Ismael Zambada Garcia's power has only risen over time. The Sinaloa Cartel's Ruthless Rise the Sinaloa cartel ships and distributes large quantities of methamphetamine, marijuana, cocaine, heroin, and fentanyl to the United States every year. It has distribution centers in many cities, including Phoenix, Los Angeles, Denver, Atlanta, and Chicago. The cartel delivers items into the United States after obtaining supplies from Panama and Colombia. The illegal materials are often delivered at border crossing points along Mexico's border. Once the commodities have been safely transported to the U.S., the distribution facilities proceed to the next phase. The cartel's significant growth in prominence throughout the 1990s may be traced primarily to Zambada's ability to build partnerships with former Guadalajara cartel members. In addition, he was very skilled at organizing illicit activities with similarly prominent players in the sector. Of course, dominating territory and acquiring greater chunks of the metaphorical pie required a ruthless disregard for bloodshed, which Zimbata had. He was a prominent member of the violent Amado Carrillo Fuentes organization, also known as the Juarez Cartel, according to the U.S. State Department. Zambada collaborated with Fuentes for several years until Fuentes died in 1997, at which point Zambada integrated Fuentes' groups into the Sinaloa Cartel. This consolidation was far from voluntary. According to Zambada's wife, from 1992 until 2000, the days were rough and brutal with a dumb, pointless conflict that devastated many families and left many people with a lot of anguish in their hearts. For much of the period between 1993 and 2001, El Chapo was imprisoned, and El Mayo was in control of the expansion of the Sinaloa cartel. El Mayo also sent a private helicopter to get El Chapo out from the prison in Puente Grande. He is often attributed with El Chapo's elevation after his initial jailbreak comes as no surprise. Zambada Garcia rose to prominence as a drug trafficker in Mexico in the late 1990s. 
However, after being indicted by Mexico's Attorney General's office in 1998 and by the FBI the following year, Zambada just disappeared off the face of the earth. He has been on the run since then. El Mayo's Mysterious Disappearance Zambada had been on the run since 1998, but he continued to work for El Chapo until his apprehension in 2016. It was his third capture after he had fled from jail a second time. Following a lengthy investigation, the United States government announced a $15 million reward for information leading to Ismail Zambada Garcia's capture. An indictment against Zambada issued by the United States government in 2009 said that the drug trafficker hired sicarios, or hitmen, who carried out hundreds of acts of violence at their discretion, including murders, abduction and torturing, and brutal collections of a drug debt. However, throughout the 2000s, Mexican President Felipe Calderón focused mainly on another group, the Tijuana Cartel. As a result, the Sinaloa Cartel took advantage of its rival's vulnerability and moved forward with all of its might to consolidate control over its areas. Consequently, the Tijuana Cartel has been substantially dismantled during the previous decade, leaving the Sinaloa Cartel at the top of the symbolic mountain, with an estimated $20 billion in cash and investments. Meanwhile, upon El Chapo's capture, a whole new conflict arose. Damaso Lopez Ne, who assisted El Chapo in his two jail escapes, as well as El Chapo's sons, Ivan Archivaldo and Jose Alfredo Guzman, and El Chapo's brother, Aurelino El Guano, came to fame as a result of their efforts. It doesn't seem like the 73-year-old, who apparently suffers from diabetes and is hiding out in the mountains of Mexico's Sinaloa area, will do well at the end of the day. His actual location, on the other hand, remains a mystery. According to Vigil, it is pretty tough to apprehend somebody up in those mountains who has been up there many times. One of the most important reasons El Mayo has managed to elude arrest for so long may be because he maintains a low profile. He had only given one interview to the Mexican magazine Proceso in 2010. In the interview, he spoke of living in constant terror of being apprehended, and he admitted that the military had tried at least four times to catch him. Before taking over as cartel leader, he served as the logistical coordinator for the Zambada Garcia section, which has been in charge of the transportation of cocaine and heroin into the United States. El Mayo Net Worth 2020 According to a Bloomberg study, El Mayo's net worth is between $3 billion and $4 billion. However, determining a precise net worth for drug traffickers, particularly those operating on a large scale like El Mayo, is difficult. As an example, officials once thought that the Sinaloa cartel was generating $11 billion per year from the sale of narcotics, according to one estimate. However, it is a conservative figure based on the quantity of narcotics confiscated by the United States police. Furthermore, it does not cover the selling of drugs in other locations. Furthermore, the cartel operates several firms that serve as fronts for its activities. Maria Teresa, El Mayo's daughter, is said to oversee a childcare facility owned by the Sinaloa cartel, including a water park. It is hard to establish a precise assessment, because the cartel continues to launder money via various routes. However, we know that El Mayo is now unable to use his comparatively large fortune. He is reportedly hiding in the highlands of Sinaloa, Mexico to avoid capture by the police. The Rise of El Mayo at the beginning of his drug trafficking career, he was a farmer who made his way into the world of drug trafficking by delivering minor quantities of narcotics from one location to another. The Sinaloa cartel concentrated its efforts on the states of Sinaloa, Durango, Chihuahua, Sonora, Nuevo León, and Michoacán, and they were successful in keeping a low profile during an operation against drug trafficking organizations. Sadly, not all of the accomplices of the Sinaloa cartel chief, who was charged by the FBI in 2003 for drug trafficking, have had the same good fortune. In addition to El Chapo, who is currently serving an indeterminate sentence in a federal prison in Colorado, El Mayo's son, Vicente Zambada Niebla, is presently serving a 15-year sentence after pleading guilty to multiple drug trafficking charges and admitting to ordering the murder and kidnapping of cartel figures. When Guzman was caught in 2016, the organization's management was handed over to El Mayo alone, and El Chapo thinks he was the one who orchestrated Guzman's inevitable apprehension. During Guzman's trial, his attorneys claimed that El Mayo had been cooperating with both the Mexican and the United States governments. The argument was that he had been paying authorities to keep his participation in the cartel out of the courts and escape prison time, while El Chapo took the fall for his actions. Guzman's attorneys, on the other hand, argued that he had been the real head of the Sinaloa cartel and that he had been the one responsible for decades of bloodshed and crime in Mexico. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content.